remember that scene in the new Star Trek movie where he says, beam us up, Mr. Scott, there's no good pizza on this planet. Of course you don't. Probably because you didn't see it, or because it didn't happen. Personally, I'd go with both. But even Klingons know that starships are equipped with protein resequencers, food synthesizers, and eventually replicators that could dematerialize any matter and then rematerialize it as food, like pizza or donuts, or better yet, chocolate. Step aside, Wonka. I would boldly go anywhere if I had a machine that made an unlimited supply of chocolate. And we may have one sooner than later. Anjan Contractor, an engineer at Systems and Materials Research Corporation, just got a $125,000 grant from NASA to create a universal food synthesizer, i.e. a 3D printer that prints food, so to speak. Instead of using plastics, the universal food synthesizer contains cartridges filled with the building blocks of food in powdered form – sugars, carbohydrates, proteins, and other essential nutrients. Pizza, beer, and M&Ms. Those, minus the pizza, beer, and M&M part are then combined and layered by the printer into food to get pizza, beer, and M&Ms. Mmm. I digress. Part of the science is tweaking the formula to generate synthesized foods that are tastier and healthier. Today, all eyes are on Anjan's prototype because it's a 3D printer that in fact prints chocolate. So whatever happened to George Jetson and our promises to have flying cars by now with all of our food in pill form from a machine? NASA? It turns out that while you can get your minimum daily requirements of vitamins and minerals in a pill shape the size of a brontosaurus burger, what you can't get so far are enough essential proteins, fibers, and the recommended 2,000 calories a day needed by the average human being. Okay, okay, you could. If making food out of something that's not food sounds familiar, you've probably had tofu. But I mean, it is a bean, so... But what if you could take a steak and grow it into a cow? Or a herd of cows? or an entire fast food restaurant complete with a slide and a room full of giant plastic balls but served broccoli and cauliflower that tasted like chocolate. That was sort of the idea behind the Tissue Engineering and Organ Fabrication Laboratory at Harvard Medical School. In 2000, researchers there began trying to grow in vitro meat. It's similar to the process used in in vitro fertilization. Muscle cells from an animal are placed into a container of nutrients and fed until they eventually grow into an actual muscle, seen here as filet mignon. It took 13 years, but in May of 2013, Dr. Mark Post in the Netherlands successfully grew a 5-ounce hamburger using 20,000 strips of muscle tissue grown in vitro. The price of the first IV burger? $320,000. Are fries included? While the price is sure to come down, the process is still too new to determine what health risks are involved in growing meat in a dish, or in making pizza with a 3D printer. What could possibly go wrong? Two words, Soylent Green. That's the 1973 movie starring Charlton Heston about the Soylent Corporation and its ideas for creating food out of something called, spoiler alert, Soylent Green, which turned out to be made from, spoiler alert, people. All that cannibals are lining up for that. In the meantime, I'll wait for my 3D printer that can print all the chocolate I want. Hmm, maybe I should add some toner. <laughs>